Welcome to Reef Diary, day 51. So I thought for today, instead of working on the tank, do something a little more fun. I bought this pump at least two months ago. It's been sitting here waiting for me to do an unboxing video that I never got around to. I actually have two MP60s as well, so I've had all three waiting. So I thought, let's do the MP MP40 today. So we are gonna open this guy up and see what's inside the box. I don't know if you've used Vortex before, but I've been using them since 2006, I believe, and love them. So here we are inside the box. The difference between this Vortex and this one is probably seven years. <laughs> it's actually super sticky and feels disgusting on the outside. It's not hot to the touch. It's dead silent. It uses the quiet drive and uh, it has, you know, the, it's modern, but it's old. And so I replaced, I wanted to get a new one. So this will replace the outside part with a new one. They actually look identical side by side. And it's the same driver, except the software, it's not gonna use EcoSmart Live this time. It's gonna use Mobius. So I've got my outside part. I've got a power supply, the cord for the power supply, the actual wet side. This is the part that goes inside the tank and it came with a sponge that I don't use. And these are really uh, well designed. I've been using them for a long time. And I end up replacing these or buying extras of these because what I like to do is take one out, put inside something to clean it, like vinegar, acid, whatever. And then after it, and while that's soaking, I put another one in that's already clean to keep going. So this will just unscrew like that. And then inside here, if you use a small tool, you can pry this up. And inside is a magnet inside that spins and allows this to do its rotation. The, uh, the original ones had a rubber mat that was orange, and the O-ring was orange, but I see in this one here, it's black. So very nice, clean look. Now, of course, it's brand new out of the box. It's gonna look fantastic, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up, and then this pump now will now be on the Mobius ecosystem instead of EcoSmart Live. Something I didn't mention, it comes with spacers. So these are designed for diff different thicknesses of glass. But because my tank is three quarter inch, I don't use any of these. I won't use this one, which is designed for quarter inch glass. I know that this one, this one is for half inch glass. I won't use it. And this one here, it says to use a glass over half an inch. This one's a very thin pad. Maybe I will stick that on the back side of this pump just for safety reasons to keep the glass safe. But uh, it's, and the other thing I want to mention is I always use a sticky pad at the top. So they give you a sticky pad, you're supposed to glue it on and then zip tie it. And a lot of people don't like to actually do that. But if for some reason the two halves became separated, this part here, which is expensive, would fall on the ground and possibly be destroyed. So you don't want to take the chance of ruining this, denting it, damaging whatever's on the floor beneath it. So always tie it to the top of your tank. It's just a smart move and you don't have to worry about anything, especially if you take one off to clean it, this will just hang here. It won't want to plummet. You won't have to find a way to put it somewhere. And I, I know some people like to turn them upside down and have the cord go down, but just don't do it. Run the cord up to the top of your tank and secure it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. With my tank's configuration, the way it's set up, I have the Vortec right there on the 400 gallon pushing across the bomby. And the wire actually comes down here, down this pipe, and goes right here and then into what would be a cabinet. So my plan is to run a new wire to the new driver that'll sit right here, but I'm gonna bring it in right here through the top, through the back here and inside, because I wanna put some woodwork on here at one point and I don't want this wire to be in my way. I made these driver holders a long time ago. They're made of acrylic and this just sits on top of the bracket with a piece of Velcro and then underneath are the wires. And uh, so what I have to actually do is open up my driver, feed the wire through and then put it on there and it'll stay like that forever for the next 10 years of my life. It's so I never have to take it apart again. I'm ready. So first thing I do is cut off all the zip ties, remove the old motor, remove the wet side on the inside, apply the sticky sticker to the motor on the outside of the brand new pump, clean the glass on the outside as well as the inside because now's a perfect opportunity. And then I went ahead and I secured the motor to the outside of the tank with that sticky pad at the top. With that done, I can open up the driver, remove the cord that leads into it, and feed that outside the tank and down the side where I need it. And then I secure everything with more zip ties because I like everything to be super tidy. The next step required me to remove the old driver and its wiring and its power supply and get that all out of the way. And then run the wire where I wanted to go. So I tried it from above and I hated it. <laughs> 
and I found I had just enough wire to go up from below, but from behind the stand this time. So it actually looks nice and clean, and it's not in a weird spot where it would block any kind of woodwork. I went ahead and ran the new power supply into place. I plugged everything in, and then I went ahead and powered it up to see how it would operate. And now we're gonna use more zip ties to make sure all the wires are nice and neat. And I wanted to mention, I love that the Vortec uses a battery backup to keep them running when there's a power outage. And that is a huge selling point for me, and it's one of the reasons why I love using the Vortex. And you guys saw in a previous di Reef Diary where I hooked up all those big batteries to actually have a super long run, so I don't have to worry about any kind of situation, even if it were to last, you know, 12, 14, 18 hours, a whole day, I should be set. Okay, so that's basically done. I need to put a Velcro sticky on the back of that just so it holds onto the acrylic a little nicer, doesn't bob around, but it literally can't fall because of the way I've got it wired in. And I cleaned up the wires going across the floor, and it goes to all my power bricks around their little shelf here. Plugged into the EB8 for the Apex system that just provides power to that exact Vortec pump, which is the MP40 right there. This is the MP40 that goes on the Anemone Cube, and that down at the bottom is the Vectra pump that is part of the manifold that feeds water to the anemone cube. So once I plugged it in, it immediately started putting flow in the tank. I haven't even loaded Mobius yet to have it detected by the system, but it's all cleaned up, looks good, it's secure, and I'm ready to see what I can do with the programming. I'm pretty happy with how it was wired in. As you can see, there's the cable tie right there. It comes across and goes down this pipe, runs all the way down the wall, goes into that little corner back there, and then feeds back up into this spot here. And I would like to put some kind of a better splash guard. I just jammed that there for now, just in case water were to happen. But uh, I really think I'm gonna be replacing the stand very soon. This stand is eight years old and it's starting to rust right here, which makes me concerned. It's a steel stand, but it's not gonna last forever. So it might be time to consider something much nicer to kind of protect everything underneath. So Ecotech came out with something called Mobius a couple of years ago, and several of their devices in my home already on it. My Versa pump is on there, my Gen 5 XR15 over the Anemone Cube is set up. So I already have Mobius, I'm a little familiar with it. But in the case of today, I added the brand new MP40, which was plugged in. I told it to look for devices, it found one that I needed to assign. And once I gave it its own uh, identification and I named it, I was able to go ahead and start doing the programming. Once the setup was completed, I could go ahead and start picking flow. I had to kind of poke around in here to figure this out, but basically I wanted some intensity that was about medium. And then it made me go into the lighting schedule, which kind of confused me. And I finally just picked one and hit save just so I could move forward with my life. I also wanted to go ahead and name this pump. So I'm not guessing which one it is. So I found the option in there to actually name it. So I named it Bommy because it's over the coral Bommy on the right end of my reef. Just a good way to identify a pump easily from a glance. In the upper right corner, it says identify. If you tap it, it'll blink the lights on the driver so you know what you're working on. While I was in here, I went ahead and updated the firmware for my Radeon Gen 5. Just figured why not? And about, I don't know, four minutes later, it was done. So here is my flow pattern for now that I've programmed. It's pretty simple. It's reef crest and lagoon in the evening and then steady mode all night. And finally, my reef tank was featured in Coral Magazine in the latest issue. I ordered a bunch of issues in case you wanted to buy one for my website. I can even autograph it if that's your thing. If you liked today's video, please tap the like button. And also you should be a subscriber if you're not already.